I'm Thomas Droge, and I'm an acupuncturist and Qigong teacher in New York. My name is Brenda Kahn. Um, I was a recording artist for many years. And so this story takes place in Williamsburg, New York, in 1994, I think. Now, I'm not sure exactly what the year was. I think it was 1993. It was still pretty wild. And I lived in this humongous loft space that was actually three separate loft spaces. And my space was 1,200 square feet. You know, it was a serious place for artists to go and have enough space to create and live and, and do their thing. But it was also pretty edgy. I had just met who's now my husband, but at the time was my boyfriend. My girlfriend was a, was a singer-songwriter who later became my wife, actually. He was coming over after work. I had been working at this restaurant and it was a slow day and I was sitting around and I had the New York Times in front of me and I'm, you know, leafing through the Times and bored out of my mind. And uh, I came across the obituary section and I started seeing all these names and names and names and the story just goes on like endless hundreds of people and it's just the Sunday paper. And I was kind of overcome by the you know, New York anonymity that everyone always talks about. And I was like, well, this is the final anonymous New York moment where, like, we're just disappearing into the obituary page. And I was very sort of impulsive back then. And we had some black gaffer's tape sitting around in the restaurant. And so I just took my arm and I, I made a morning armband, black gaffer's tape band on my arm. Finished the shift, went back to my girlfriend's place, and it was late. He got off pretty late. I don't remember what time it was, but probably around 11 or so. And he knocked on the door. I got to her door, and for whatever reason, I just decided to put this tape over my mouth also, to the black gaffer's tape to cover up my mouth so I couldn't speak. And I kept thinking about how all these people have no one to speak for them. And I open the door, and there he is with um, duct tape over his mouth and duct tape wrapped around his arm. And I take the tape off, and we're talking, and we're just kind of talking through, sort of processing through this idea of how we all kind of slip away. I took the tape off his mouth, and then I don't remember if we took it off his arm or not. Maybe he did. Yeah, he did. And we have a night, you know, whatever. We go to sleep. And then at about 2 in the morning, or no, like 4 in the morning. Around 2 o'clock in the morning, maybe later, all of a sudden we hear this. I hear this really soft car crash, just like kunk. Sort of knew it was something bad, but it wasn't like a huge crash. And then a horn that won't stop. And for some reason, because of everything that had happened or whatever it was, I just jumped out of bed. We run downstairs. And I go running out of the building, and there's a taxi cab sitting at the corner, and he's banged into a car, very little minor damage. And I get closer to him, and the window's down, and I look at him, and all of a sudden I see that there's like blood come spraying out of his neck. I mean, it's like classic movie kind of situation. <laughs> it's like a sp out of blood is coming out of his neck. And he's moving his mouth, but he's not talking. Nothing's coming out. Now we know there's something really bad happening. He looks at me and he's trying to say something, and I have no idea what he's trying to say. My husband, just or boyfriend at the time, takes off his shirt, balls it up, and just holds it down on his neck. And this is back when there were these things called payphones on the street. And he says, go call 911, and there's a payphone on the corner, and I'm calling 911 and he's holding this guy's, you know, neck, trying to keep him from bleeding out. And I tell him, you know, don't worry, it's gonna be okay. But of course I know it's not gonna be okay. You know, they said, okay, we'll send an ambulance and nobody comes and nobody comes and nobody comes. And so I stay with him and, and he... He just dies. When people die, the spirit just, you can see the moment it just leaves them. And, and goes out on its way. And this is Williamsburg, 1994, Metropolitan, Roebling, Grand, like that whole region, and it's deserted. And suddenly we realize that somebody just killed somebody and we're standing there. It's a stab wound and something 
happened, whoever did this could be very close by. We don't know what to do, and the ambulance hasn't come. So we're there for a really long time, and finally the ambulance shows up. We finally went back upstairs, and we were adrenalized like crazy. And, and it takes a really long time for us to realize that Thomas came to the door with the tape over his mouth and the tape around his arm. I suddenly, for the first time, really realized the gravity of, of what it means to not be here. That's not a coincidence, you know, like that, I mean, the, that really can't be a coincidence. Like, how could that be a coincidence? We shared this moment of him teaching me, maybe as his last gesture on the planet, how important it is that we all see each other as these cherished human beings valued in the moment. The sort of shocking and an amazing thing about this story to me was it was sort of proof. It sort of settled that question for me that we actually, we can sort of sense the future. We can sense the recent events around us as they're happening and sometimes a little bit before they're happening. The rest of my life has been a kind of um, proof and maybe even a little bit of a penance of taking care of people who are struggling, trying so hard to be here, you know, because I'm an acupuncturist and I'm working with them and to just keep reminding me of how lucky I am to still be here hanging out. Hi, I'm Robin Humphrey, and I'm the owner of Zen Impact Fitness. I teach runners how to uh, run holistically. I met my husband 25 years ago in a, in a gym. Uh, we were weightlifting, and uh, it was back in the era of step aerobics, and uh, he was looking at my butt, actually, and I didn't like him. 